quote that has always motivated and challenged me when I'm facing a transition of seasons like New Year or a job or a house or whatever is the way you leave one season is how you enter the next. Many of us think a lot about how we start the new job, start the new relationship, start the new whatever, but but rarely do we actually realize the way you end is just as important as how you start. So as we're reflecting on the new year, I'm going to share with you some things that I have found to be really useful in processing the last year, things some little patterns I see in scripture about how to do it well so that you can head into your next year well and it leaves you really encouraged and pulls the Holy Spirit into the process so it's just full of life and full of hope and a sense of future. It's so good. So we're going to have a really great episode. Stay in touch. Watch the description down below. I'm going to be dropping a downloadable worksheet that you can do from today's episode to help you if you'd like to take that worksheet into your new year's processing. It's meant to just be a resource to you. All right, let's dive in. Hi, you're listening to Java with Jen with your host, Jenna Lee Samuel. On this show, I bring the simplicity of hearing God's voice into everyday life in a no-nonsense, authentic, and super practical way. With coffee in hand and real life in our faces, let's do this. Ay, ay, ay. Hello, my friends. It has been so long since I have had the wonderful delight of sitting and sharing my heart with you. Just me, no guests, just me. Well, transitioning seasons, time, where we put our energies, being productive. Okay, hi, I'm an Enneagram 3, so achieving and being productive is like my superpower, right? It motivates me and inspires me. So I personally love New Year's and transitions and new seasons, birthdays, and I find new seasons hiding all over the calendar and I try to make (laughs) the most out of them. So this episode, I want to share with you guys, we all are familiar with the merry-go-round of It's New Year's, Make Your Resolutions, By February or March, you've probably failed at them all. That's okay. Better luck next year. (laughs) Listen, if if something isn't working, Linda, don't keep doing it that same way, right? That's insanity. Doing the same thing, expecting a different result. So we're going to try a different approach this year, going into New Year's. And maybe you have a really great method, and I'd love to hear about it, actually. Message me on Instagram and tell me all about your method because I could could pull some of that into my life hacks in January. That would be really great. Um... But for today, there are two major phases, I feel like, that are really, really important in transitioning. You guys heard me say in the intro, the way you end a season is how you begin the next. The way we finish is the way we start. Usually, it's the same posture. It's the same headspace. It's the same mindset. And so it's important that we actually give attention to how we finish so we can give attention to how we're starting. We always, every day is a new day. God's mercies are new. Every day can be a fresh start. But when we have milestones like New Year's and whatever, it's just a really great moment to pause, reflect, and make the most. So these two aspects of um, transitioning and processing, I feel like you could break it down into two exercises if you wanted to set aside um, an hour one day, an hour another day, and kind of dig into these. It would probably be good to do them kind of separate. They kind of access your brain in different ways. Um, And so this first one we see in scripture, celebrate, look back, and worship what God has done. Not worship what God has done. Worship God for what he has done. Uh, When we flooded in our house, the Lord put this concept in my heart that amazed me how strengthening and invigorating and fueling it was. And he said, he reminded me of Bill Johnson's words, who said, I stay encouraged by looking for what God is doing. And as I've been coming towards the new year, the Lord reminded me of those words. Hey, Jen, as you're transitioning to the new year, look for what I'm doing. Because I, a couple weeks ago, hit kind of, I I just got real discouraged just for a couple days. I don't usually live there too long, but for whatever reason, I just got kind of discouraged and heavy. I think it was around when the Spotify wrapped results came out and all like your stats for your podcast come out and tell you how good it's doing on Spotify. Granted, most of you listen in Apple. Spotify is only like 4% of my listeners. 
but I was still pretty excited about the stats that I saw. And I was like, ooh, this is fun. And so I was super encouraged and like posted it and was like, yay, look what the podcast has done, how many people it's reaching. I'm so excited. God is so good. And then uh, other podcaster friends sent me theirs and they were newer podcasters and a couple of them that I had, I had helped them build their podcast and they had better stats than me. And I was like, oh, bruh. <laughs> I was like, uh, okay, fighting being discouraged, super happy for you. Not going to be discouraged, super happy for you. So I had to, you know, had to wrestle through that a little bit. Um, but then it made me realize, and then that, honestly, that was kind of a doorway that discouragement came in. And I was like, why, why is discouragement trying to come in? And so that's when I started processing with the Lord. Like, how do I process this year? Without heading into my new year with heaviness or discouragement. I don't want to make goals um, out of an effort to to feel like I'm trying to clean up a mess. You know what I mean? Which, for some perspective, this year has been a good year. <laughs> that was just how I was feeling in the moment. But but regardless, I don't ever want to go into a season feeling like I'm going in with anxiety or with um, frustration or discouragement or feeling like I have to make up momentum that I didn't accomplish from all my goals I didn't hit, right? We've all been there. Um, And so I felt like that's where the Lord kind of interjected himself with some wisdom. A, he was very kind and brought me some encouragement from different places. He's just so good at that. And so I felt a lot better by the end of a couple days. But one thing he reminded me is he said, Jenna Lee, it's your job to stir yourself up in your holy faith. Like it's your job to encourage yourself from within. It's your job. Now, it's also the Holy Spirit's job and he's good at it. But my stats are not responsible for encouraging me. They can. If they're encouraging, that's great. But the Lord was like, your encouragement needs to come from a deeper place, from a well of the inside, of understanding of what I have done. And so I actually had ended up scrolling through my photo reel on my camera roll. I have like thousands and thousands of pictures. And um, I was scrolling through the year. And it made me realize how many milestones I actually had experience this year that I'd forgotten about. Now going into this year, the Lord told me, focus on the podcast and I will bring you anything you need for your business. And so I actually didn't focus on my styling business. You guys know I'm a wardrobe stylist and I have a styling business. Side note, if you need a wardrobe stylist, I'm your girl. Um, But I didn't focus on my styling business. I focused on building my podcast and it's been good. It's been fruitful. Um, But as I was going through my camera reel, I realized how faithful the Lord was to bring different like highlights and big moments for my styling business. In the spring, I hosted a runway show with 40 models and eight boutiques. And it was a big event for the local museum that was put on in the area. It was a big deal. And it actually garnered a lot of attention. And it was just, it was a major win. It was a very productive, exciting time with lots of great feedback. Everybody had a wonderful time. That was a win. That came to me. That was dropped in my lap. Um, Another one was I did also in the spring. uh, I did a live workshop with some women. It was beautiful. It was a whole lot of work. I don't think I'll quite do it in that model again, but... It was a it was a it was a good experience and I filmed it and then I turned that into an online course. Side note, if you want that online course, you can buy it online. Um <laughs> and then from there I also was featured in a magazine. Oh shoot. I got a second invite. I need to respond to them. Um I was featured in uh what's it called? Voyager magazine, Houston. They they featured me for a second time, and then Voyager Houston, Voyager Magazine Phoenix just reached out to me within the last month or two, and they wanted to feature me also. And so th- that would be my third magazine feature. Super cool opportunities. Like, the Lord just brought them to me. All of these the Lord brought to me. And then recently, the Lord brought me a brand um, partnership that was actually a paid partnership, which was a blessing. And it was a really cool uh, company that they have chefs that create food. And they sent me meals um, in this partnership. The agreement was they send me the meals for free and they pay me for the content I created. So the Lord blessed me with meals I didn't have to make and pay, you know, it was a blessing and and that came to me. So the Lord was faithful to bring things to me through my business and the podcast experienced cool things as well. Here's why I say all of that. I forgot about all that. (laughs) When I was, when I was looking at my friend's stats, I suddenly got overwhelmed with what I felt like was not happening in my life. Listen, Linda, 
This happens every time we open Instagram. This happens when you scroll Facebook. It's like looking at your friend's stats and then suddenly yours are not good enough anymore. Okay, so can I, can I just maybe encourage you? Consider a little less social media if discouragement is a, pro- is a problem and you're feeling stressed out about your life. Consider maybe in the New Year's, maybe January, get off of social media, see what it does for your soul. Um, but it is important, and we see the Israelites do this in the Bible. This, this concept is present throughout Scripture. When the Israelites were maybe finished a battle or they finished a long journey or God did some big miracle for them or whatever— they would build an altar. And these were often called altars of remembrance. And they would anoint them with oil. They'd make a sacrifice on it. They'd have a feast, a celebration. They would name it. And they'd say, this is the place where God heard us. This is the place they call Eden Odom. You know, I'm making stuff up. Eden Odom. This is the garden of many victories, you know, or whatever. They would just name it so that every time they'd see that altar, it was a physical reminder of what God had done in their life. So in my experience, my camera roll became my altar. I had a physical reminder of the things God did. And so I'm actually gonna take some time this week and sit down and do a deep dive processing of all that God has done. And to be honest, I wanna actually print up a bunch of these highlights and print photos and make a vision board where half of it is a celebration of what God has done and the other half is a celebration of what God is going to do because I have planned for it (laughs) and I have prayed about it. Um, And so always stop and celebrate because if you live in that space. If you don't stop to celebrate what God has done, A, you're not going to operate from the place of faith. If you remember the story of the Israelites going into Canaan, the promised land, um, Joshua and Caleb, among the, the 10 spies or the 12 spies that were sent over to spy out the land and see how hard it would be to possess, the Israelites had a mindset of, oh my gosh, they're giants in the land. We're going to be consumed. They are going to devour us and eat our children and take our wives. And this is horrible. But Caleb and Joshua had eyes to see what God could do because it says in the scripture that they reminded themselves, they encouraged themselves in the Lord for all that God had done for the Israelites. And because of that position of reminding themselves what God has done, that stirs your faith so that now as you look in a new direction, you have a filter and a lens of faith and not one of fear or discouragement. Friends, this is important. So so important. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. If you want your next year to be pleasing to God, it is important to make sure that you process in a way that puts you in a posture of faith as you are planning for your next year. This is so important. And so I love that. And so we see this throughout scripture. So uh, let's see here. As you're looking at the things that you did and you're doing a deep dive, one, on the first level, just let your heart be fully encouraged. Let your heart celebrate what God did. Really relish and go deep in the obstacles that were overcome, the things that God gave you wisdom to avoid. You can even celebrate the dangers and the pitfalls that God saved you from having to experience you know those are also wins and so one thing you can do this is a cool way to do it with your kids I have a friend who they they do a rock jar but I've heard people do it lots of different ways you can write it on little whatevers and put it in a jar and at the end of the year you pull it all out and reflect on what God has done when you have like a little milestone in life your kid scores a goal that he's been praying he would score write it down and throw it in the jar and then uh, let's say your other kid gets their driver's license and that's something they've been working towards your other kid gets a gig to play guitar at a blah 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 and it's such a milestone your other kid got an a on a test and they've been struggling in that class whatever write down the milestones and stick them in a jar here's your life hack And at the end of the year, around New Year's, pull it all out and reflect on what God has done. In fact, I think I'm going to sit down and have a reflection time with my whole family because this just sounds really encouraging to do. Um, And so take time to do that. Now, as you're reflecting, it's okay to stop and ask yourself, okay, practically speaking, looking at those things, 
Is there anything that I should start doing that that I see I did maybe accidentally or unintentionally that actually helped contribute towards some of those wins? Like maybe I was more disciplined about getting up early and exercising three times a week and I actually lost 10 pounds. Woohoo! I actually didn't. I'm working on it. But maybe you did. <laughs> you know, and so think, look back as you're looking back on what the Lord has done. Don't underestimate you work in partnership with God. And so God has done things on your behalf. God has done wonderful things, but he also partnered with you. How did you cooperate with God? Did you cooperate with him by memorizing more scripture so your mouth was full of praises? Did you cooperate with him by obeying when he said, hey, you need to get up at 6 a.m. instead of 6.45? Um, Did you cooperate by cutting out sugar when you felt like the Lord was convicting you about your diet? What did you do? And so is that something that you need to continue doing? Uh, You can look at it this way. Start, stop, and continue. Are there things you should start that you did accidentally but you want to do more of? So let's start doing that or let's continue doing that rather. Rather, looking back, is there something you should have started that you didn't? Or looking back, it could have really made a big difference uh, maybe in your business or maybe in family time or in your quiet time? Is there something that you meant to start or you'd like to start that you feel like would bear more fruit in this next season? Okay, start start that. Is there something you should stop doing? In looking back, is there something that you were doing that was getting in the way of what God wanted to do? Um, maybe overcoming limiting beliefs, overcoming, like I just sat with someone today who she called me out. She's like, Jen, you don't share your story. You don't share your story enough. People need to know your story. They don't want to just know you can dress them. They want to know that when you were a kid, you were a missionary kid and you grew up on secondhand clothes and it made you cry on Easter because you didn't have a new outfit like everybody else did because inside of you is someone who wants to help people be beautiful and dress and blah, blah, blah. That anointing is in you and that's why it made you cry as a little girl. The other girls weren't crying. You were crying, (laughs) you know? And so she called me out. She was like, Jen, you you need to stop hiding behind believing that no one needs needs or wants to know your story. People need to know your story. And so looking at your last year, what should you stop doing? Should you stop hiding? Should you stop refusing to use your giftings? Should you stop assuming you don't have time for this, that, or the other? Should you stop making certain excuses or all excuses? Should you stop um, uh, looking at life through a glass half empty. Maybe you should start having an abundance mentality in different areas of your life. What can you start, stop, or continue that can nurture more wins in this next season? I'm kind of borrowing from our next phase of this, but it ties in with this first one. So as you're looking back, you're celebrating what God has done, your worship, take time to worship him and tell him how thankful you are. Listen, guys, when my house flooded, back in 2017, and we lost everything that we owned. We still had a home, but it was destroyed, right? We lost everything in the home. Um, I asked the Lord, God, how do I protect my kids from the trauma of this experience? Because this could be one of those defining traumatic moments, or it can be something that is for our good. How? What's the difference maker? And the Lord told me again, stay encouraged by looking for what God is doing. And so that was my lens. That was my filter. I noticed when I prayed, there was times when I would get caught up in an overwhelm. Like, oh my gosh, I don't have a vacuum and I need to vacuum my floors, but I don't have money to buy a vacuum. What am I going to (laughs) do? You know, or like things would pile up and I would start to feel the weight of what we had experienced and I would get overwhelmed and I would pray from that place. Y'all, I didn't see any miracles or any answers to prayer. Maybe piddly little tiny things would squeak through. But like no real results from prayers when I prayed from the place of overwhelm and discouragement and lack. But I remember distinctly one day in particular, I stopped myself in the middle of a lack, fear, overwhelm prayer. And I said, you know what, Lord, I'm going to stop myself right there. You have been doing so much for us and I have not been celebrating it. I want to take a minute and celebrate you and celebrate what you've done. Thank you so much. And I started listing off all this stuff and it lifted my spirits. It lifted my eyes. It lifted my faith lens. And then at the end of that, I said, Lord, here's what I would ask. Lots of families in our church have suffered and flooded and they need help. And we need real help. We need real money to really lift a burden. I mean, real money. I said, Lord, would you provide for the families in our church that have suffered lack? 
We need a major intervention and a major provision. The next morning, Good Morning America called our church and said, we've heard about the relief you're doing in your area. We want to bless your church. We're sending everybody that has flooded $2,000 gift cards. No lie, guys. And we'd like to invite them to come to Houston where we're doing a partnership with Home Depot and they can take anything at this pop-up shop. They can take anything home they can fit in their car for free. Y'all, that was after I shifted my prayer into thanksgiving and celebrating what God has done. Listen, friends, before you go into praying for and thinking about 2023, do not miss taking the time to celebrate the good work that the Lord has done in your life. Don't miss it. It's going to encourage you. It will fuel your faith, which is probably why those prayers are more effective. Okay, so looking ahead Lord, show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy, and at your right hand, pleasures forevermore. I think that's going to be like a mantra I take into this year. Lord, show me the path of life. As you're transitioning from one year to the next, ask the Lord, show me the path of life, because in your presence is fullness of joy. That's where I want to live, in your presence, where there is fullness of joy, because at your right hand is also pleasures forevermore. God is the source of all good, all good things. Okay, so that's your first phase. Stop and celebrate what God has done on your behalf, and make that your first stop, okay? Um, Make that your journaling. Make a vision board. Do it with your kids. Do it with your family. Just make it big and exciting and and encouraging and whatever. And just really take the time to celebrate. Okay, your phase two of processing your transition. You do want to look ahead and make a plan, right? The Bible talks about make a vision. Run with it. Make it plain so the people can champion it. You know, having a vision. In fact, in the conversation I had with that friend today, We talked about how actually important it is to write down goals, not from a place of lack, but a place of accomplishment. I plan to, or not I plan to, I am reaching 100,000 people a year with my podcast. Am I now? No, that's not my numbers currently, but I will. That's a goal. I want to reach 100,000 people a year, eventually more than that, with my podcast. So I'm going to write it down as a goal that is, Speaking from a place of achieving, because that is 100% purely a posture of faith when I'm speaking as though it has been done. In fact, Hebrews 11.1 1 says, faith is the hope or the uh, certainty of things hoped for, the assurance of things not yet seen. I think I quoted that a little bit wrong, but it was that's the idea. The certainty of things hoped for, the assurance of things not yet seen. Assurance means, I know it will be. I know it's coming. My son did something recently. He, uh, he'd been praying for a DS for a couple of years. And I told him, bud, I, I'm, I love you. I'm not buying you another electronic device. I feel like I spent half your life trying to get you off of screens. I'm not going to buy you another one. If you would like it, you may work hard, earn the money, and buy it yourself. I will, I will not fund that. I'm sorry. And so he's been praying for like two years apparently. He got close to having the money and then he got excited about spending money and then it disappeared and then he was like, ah, I'll never make it. <laughs> and good lesson for him. Um, so he was praying. Well, recently a friend had a couple of spares and the little buddy was like, hey, you can have this DS. I don't ever use it. Shiloh got so excited. So, 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 so excited. And I, I told him as we were processing the next day, he goes, you know, mom, I was praying for that. And I said, really? He goes, yep. And I knew I would get one. I knew it. I knew I would get one. And I said, really? He goes, yeah, but I learned something. I said, what did you learn, buddy? He said, I learned that sometimes when you pray for something, even though you know it's going to happen, sometimes you have to wait for it. And I was like, oh, bro, that'll preach. And and it was true. You know, as you're planning in your year, looking ahead into 2023 or whatever year lo- season, whatever change you're looking into, here's how you pull the Holy Spirit into this. Because we can make lots of goals. We can make lots of plans. We can dream out to Wazoo. And to be honest, there's nothing wrong with that. I think it's really healthy for your heart and your soul to just dream without limits. When we're always judging, filtering, and putting limits on ourselves, that's actually when we hold ourselves back. So we definitely need to dream without limits. Dream with the Holy Spirit. But when it comes to setting your expectations, it's important to... 
and I do this in all prayer, whether it's for a new season or just any issue, I ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, what can I ask you for? What can I pray for in this situation? And I'll, I'll ask him, like if someone is sick and we're not sure if they're going to live or die, I'll ask the Lord, God, are they going to survive and how should I be praying? There have been times, one time, the Lord COVID, he said, it is not her time. You need to pray that she will survive. And so I prayed and she did. She pulled through. But simultaneously, a man who was also sick, the, I felt in my heart he was not going to pull through. And so I still pray for healing because I know God is able. And I just in case I'm, I miss the plan, you know, whatever. I just, I just want to still pray what I know he's able to do. But in my heart, I, I knew he was going to go and be with the Lord. So I had peace. I had peace for it. Um, So when it comes to planning for your year, ask the Holy Spirit, like, Holy Spirit, where should I put my energy? Kind of like I did this last year. The Lord said, focus on building your podcast and I will bring opportunities to you for your business. And I said, okay. So I did not hustle my business, but the Lord brought really cool opportunities. I did build my, my podcast. And so ask the Lord, God, where... What would be your goals for me for 2023? Do you have something that you would like me to focus on? Um, Another thing I like to do as I'm planning into the year is aside from asking God what his goals are, is ask the Lord for a word for your year. Last year, I shared with you guys that restore was my word for the year. I felt broken. I asked the Lord to repair me. He said, I will not repair you. I will restore you. And restoration means to return to original design. Y'all, I have gone full circle this year, and in my personal life, I've thought about putting it in a podcast, but it's, it's still kind of so raw. I'm not sure if I'm going to share it yet, but eventually I will. Um, the Lord shifted me out of a deep, dark night of the soul. Dark night of the soul is what they call it. I've been in a dark night of the soul for about three years, have not felt like myself. But in November, I was reminding the Lord about his word to restore me. I said, Lord, you promised you would restore me. I still do not feel like myself. I still do not feel restored. There are still very broken places in my life. I need to see your hand of restoration. I'm holding you to your promise. That week, the Lord aligned so many different things, brought a series of prophetic words, got me understanding about the battle I had been in for about three years, where the battle was coming from. And I, I, I told, okay, look, I'll just tell you guys. So I, I've been in this battle for like three years. Tumultuous. Um, my personal life felt like, without being dramatic, like it was falling apart in certain ways. Um, certain relationships that mattered were, were very, very uh, toxic and difficult. And, um, but I just, at the bottom of it, I knew I wasn't myself. I've even told my pastors, I said, you guys are not getting the best version of me this, these couple years you've had us. I know I'm not the best version of me. I'm broken right now. And, and I don't know what I'm going through. Eventually I won't be like this, but I don't know how to get there. And I'm just sorry. I'm sorry. You're not getting the best version of me, but I am pursuing healing and I will get there. I just don't know this path. The Lord has me on. I don't understand it. And, um, so, so then I said, I finally sat with the Lord. I said, Lord, I am tired of this. I'm tired of living in this dark night of the soul. I need you to show me what is at the root of this experience I've been having emotionally, spiritually, uh, relationally, all these things. I said, because I want to lay the ax of the word of God to the root of this tree. And I want to be done. And the Lord showed me and for the next week reminded me of a dream Stephen had in 2019 um, where, long story short, the enemy attacked me and, and managed to bite me and, and bring an attack against me. And about the time of that dream was when this dark night of the soul began. And it was one that came with confusion and religious confusion and all this different, like, not that I was confused about the Lord, but like, principles of religion were causing confusion in my thinking that were maybe not rooted in total truth. They were a little bit of man's traditions, you know? Um, and so, but the whole idea was that it was indiscernible and there was, it was going to be a lot of confusion. And so when the Lord reminded me of that, I was like, oh my gosh, is that what's been behind all of this? And so I said, Lord, with all the authority that I have over my own life, I am just decreeing that this battle is over. I am done. I'm done fighting this battle. The enemy, I declare him destroyed and defeated. And I need you to partner with me. I lay the axe of your word 
to the tree, to the root of this tree of uh, the dark night of my soul, whatever. I don't even know what I said. Anyways, but I was like, I've decided it's over. It's done. And th- but then I was like, well, I need to know if, if you're in agreement with that exactly. So <laughs> I was like, Lord, can you just like confirm that for me some way? And so over the course of the next week, the Lord brought a series of incredible confirmations that your battle is over. Your battle is over. Now you just need to fly. Your battle is over. Now you just need to fly. And then a friend of mine who works with a lot of um, influential ministers around the nation, she saw me in, uh, in Phoenix and she goes, hey, Jen, how have you been? And I told her about the dream and what the Lord showed me about it all. And she goes, you know, Jen, I feel like this season you're coming out of and this attack you've been in is about the forming of the specific anointing on your life. She got more particular, but she said this specific anointing on your life. I feel like that's what it is because everyone that I know that carries that same anointing has gone through a battle like this and it's very private and it's very lonely and it feels like it's going to destroy you, but you do come out and it's to form that anointing on your life. And when she said it, it struck me as truth. And I said, Lord, I need you to confirm if that's true, that this whole battle has been that and not because I'm just a big screw up. <laughs> and, um, and sure enough, I put my fleece out and my fleece, he just answered it like that. And it, it just broke some things off of me, man. It was just, just powerful. Anyways, why did I say all of that? I say all that to say, get a word for your year. That's where I came from. Get a word for your year. I pulled on the word that the Lord had for this year, which was to restore me. And it ended in towards the end of the year in the fall with that whole experience breaking me out of the dark night of my soul. Y'all, I finally feel like myself again. And I don't know everything I had to go through. I don't know why, but I know God wastes nothing and he's going to use it with purpose. So no matter what your year has been, no matter if it feels like you barely survived, a lot of us, I think, feel like that. Um, going into 2023, you have, you are the one with the most authority over your life and, and you have given that authority to the Lord as well. Partner with the Lord, ask him, what is the word that you have decided will be a word I can, I can grab a hold of for 2023 over my life. Give me a word. It may be a scripture. It may be an individual word, like I just said, but whatever it is, when God releases something to you, the Bible says that the mysteries of God are for him, but the revealed things are for his people to possess. Dang it. I am butchering that scripture, but the revealed things are for you to possess. And so when God releases a word to you, you have now a grace to grab a hold of it and pull it into your reality. That's why listening and hearing God's voice is so powerful. So first things first, God, what are your plans for, for my year? What would you dream over my year? Secondly, what's a, a word you have for my year? Is it a scripture? Is it a word? And then you need to hold on to that. And then what are a couple areas? This is something I'm going to do. What are a couple areas in your life that you are determined to have breakthrough on a practical level? For me, there's some fitness goals I have and some financial goals I want to reach. And for me, those are deal breakers. If I go through another year and don't achieve these goals, it's going to be really difficult to swallow. I'm like, you know what? This is the year I'm going to get those things. That is what I'm after. And so I have to get serious about building a plan, almost like reverse engineer. Where do you want to end in those areas? What do you have to do to get there? Do you have to exercise three times a week? Do you have to get up a little earlier? Do you have to eat a little healthier? Do you have to cut something out of your diet? What is it going to take to reach that goal? Same with finances or your relationships or whatever. Do you want your marriage to be one full of romance? Well, what do you have to do to accomplish that? What do you have to do to build an area of of, or a relationship of romance, you know, do sweet things, write sweet notes, go away on trips. Don't sit on your phone in bed at night, turn and talk to your spouse, pay your husband compliments, you know, like what are some things we need to do? So that's the third thing is what are some areas that you're determined to see a breakthrough? What are your deal breakers for this year? And you need to make a plan for it. Don't be afraid to plan. The Bible says in Proverbs 16, 3, you commit your plans to the Lord, they will succeed. That doesn't mean dream up anything and just say, Lord, this is yours and it'll succeed. I believe there's a partnership that is encompassed in that word commit. There's an agreement almost. Like I am agreeing with you, Lord, for your plans for me and these dreams for me, and I'm going to commit them to you. However, I do want to contribute this thought. It is possible for us to get so hung up on, I don't want to get outside of God's will that we don't actually take action. 
because we haven't heard God say, go thus therefore and start thus business and charge thus amount of money and have thus amount of client. Sometimes it doesn't, it's not that spelled out. Why? Because God wants to partner with you. He doesn't want you to be a brain dead robot. He wants your creativity to flourish. He wants your will to be involved. He wants your desires involved. He cares about your soul. And so if you look at the passage in uh, the New Testament about the the parable of the talents, there was the servants that the master gave them talents. To one he gave one, to one he gave two, to one he gave five. And he went away and he said, you invest the money, make good use of it. He came back. The one with one was afraid and buried it and didn't multiply it, but he just at least had it when the master came back. The one with two invested it and had two more. The one with five invested it and had five more. Well, the master, when he came back, yelled at the the servant that buried it and said, you wicked servant, you should have at least put it in the bank so I could have gained interest. Like your fear made you bury what I've given you and you were not a good steward of it. But the ones who multiplied it were good stewards. Okay. For those of you who didn't know the story, that's now you know. Um, If you notice, the master did not micromanage what they did with the money. He just put it in their hands and said, do something with it. And when I come back, I'll check in. So sometimes when you have a dream over your life or you have goals, sometimes we're sitting back waiting, 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 waiting for God to give you a directive. If the dream is in your heart and the Lord has not told you don't, then the directive is go and multiply. That is the directive. That is faithfulness. Go and multiply. Run with the vision. Run with the dream. Consult the Lord along the way. It's not like the only time you can ask him about something is at the beginning. Pull him into your process every day, all the time. When he has direction for you, he'll make it clear. But if you don't sense any strong direction, probably he's deferring to you and the authority he's given you to create and to manage and to steward. There's your side note. God doesn't micromanage how we create. If he gives directive, it is with purpose, never to micromanage. Okay, so as you're looking into 2023, don't be afraid to plan. Fear is the only thing that will get in the way and rob you of what 2023 can hold for you. Fear. Be realistic about how many goals you set. Okay, here's where you kind of meet. Let your expectations be reasonable, okay? Get the word from the Lord. Hear how the Lord wants to work in your life. And and ask the Lord. It's always good to ask. Um, but don't be afraid to dream with him. Okay, what what are some reasonable expectations? Let's say, let's say you have a business and your business made $600 last year. Well, if you now make it your goal to make $60,000 next year, that's maybe unrealistic, Right? Maybe go from 600 to a few thousand. Like, let's shoot for a few thousand. Because that will push you. It will challenge you. But it's not so unrealistic that you're just going to be discouraged. But I would rather you err on the side of dreaming big than dreaming small. Dream big. Because even if you don't hit the ultimate goal, you still, you still got a lot further than you would have dreaming small. Right? So dream big. Be realistic about how many goals you set. The reason I say that is sometimes we overwhelm ourselves with all these different areas of our lives. There are areas of your life that you should have goals. And and it's good to have a goal in lots of areas of your life. Maybe your relationships. Where do you want to put your energy there? Um, Hobbies. Do you want to have a hobby? It's probably a good idea. It's refreshing. Um, Time. You know, like you can pick one or two things. Or you can pick the different areas of your life and pick one goal for each one. Everybody's different. Your capacity is all different. And depending on how much change it's going to demand from your life changes how many goals would be reasonable. So be be thoughtful about it. So, okay, so we're going to reflect back on this episode, recap. And then I have a little life hack for you at the end of ways to build in new habits into your life so that uh, it's easier to build habits. There are actually little hacks to that. Okay, but a recap. As you transition and you're going to process... Firstly, first section of processing, celebrate, look back at 2022, create your altar of remembrance, whatever that is. Do a little vision board, whatever. Go through your camera roll, go through your Instagram posts, go through your Facebook posts, go through your journal, go through your calendar. If you have a day planner, go through your calendar. Your milestones are probably written on there. Look at what God has done. Look at what God has done. Ask your sister, hey, am I missing anything? Was there something big that happened this year I'm forgetting? Um... 
and write them all down and celebrate them. I would say do it with the family. Sit with the family. Brainstorm. Whatever you do, build your altar, celebrate what God has done that will give you a lens of faith and forward thinking and hope and future and potential and all of that, okay? So that's forward forward thinking. Your second round of processing is, is in your planning. As you're planning, invite the Holy Spirit into this process. God, what is your, what is your word for me for this year? Do you have plans that you'd like me to focus on for this year? Like I did with my podcast and business. He directed my focus there. Um, and don't be afraid to build with the Lord. If there's an area, but he's not being real specific, then that's an invitation for you to get real specific, for you to do some planning and dreaming. And then be realistic about how many goals you set. Don't overwhelm yourself. Goal setting and achieving should should come with a sense of motivation. It should not burn you out. So... So I would say set goals in areas that you're going to be excited about doing it or you're really desperate, like like you really need to see change in that area. Um, but don't just pile up goals for the sake of goals piling, you know. Be intentional. Be smart with your energy. It takes energy to pursue change, so be smart with where you put your energy. Um, okay, and so do this with your family. Listen, it's 2023 is going to be a great year. It's going to be great because I'm going to make it great. It's going to be great for me. Why? Because God is good and he's always in my corner. So if God is for me, who can be against me, man? This is a good life. (laughs) Okay, so we're going to go into life hacks where I'm going to share with you a couple of little basic ways that you could build new habits and make it easier. Don't go anywhere. Okay, so here's your life hacks. If you've never read the book Atomic Habits... Uh, it's a really great book and I actually read the summary one. You could probably listen to a podcast with the author and get kind of the synopsis of it. Um, but here are three tips to building new habits. If you're looking at, Hey, yeah, I need some new change in 2023. Here's the deal. Consistency matters more than milestones. Okay. Um, so It's better to make consistent small changes than occasional large ones. I think we know this in common sense. But in our daily practice, for whatever reason, our human nature may be feeling justified and feeling like, oh, look, I'm fixing what I haven't done for a week. We we migrate towards the extreme where we're like, oh, look, I didn't work out all week, so I'm going to work out for three hours today. No, it doesn't work like that. It's better (laughs) to be consistent all week long with something short and manageable than something big and grandiose on the weekend. Okay, so for one, make aim for small consistency. So if your goal is to lose weight, small and consistent, lose one pound to two pounds a week. Small, consistent. I think the reason why we get tired of consistency is because we actually get impatient. We want to reach our goals faster. We get impatient with the process. But listen, if you're doing it, in a healthy way, particularly speaking to losing weight, you can trust the process. The process will bear fruit so long as you're not sabotaging yourself somewhere. So small, consistent changes. If you are wanting to get up earlier, let's say you want to be a 5 a.m. but right now you're at 7 a.m. Do not make the two-hour leap. It's not going to be doable so easily. Go from 7 a.m. to 6.30 Make 6.30 feel normal. Then go from 6.30 to 6 o'clock or even 15-minute increments. Um, If you have no habit of working out and you want to get fit, don't suddenly go and think you're going to put an hour and a half at the gym. Start with five minutes at a consistent time every day. In fact, he said when you're building a new habit, you need to make whatever it is you're putting your time into of that new habit only take two to five minutes. That's it. Because your brain can easily jump that hurdle. It's like, oh yeah, two to five minutes, no big deal. Two to five minutes is easier to incorporate into your lifestyle than 20, 30, 40, 50 minutes. So make the habit of two minutes to five minutes every day of doing something. Maybe you do push-ups when you wake up. You do push-ups and some sit-ups. Or maybe when you're brushing your teeth, you're doing squats. Whatever it is, build it in consistently. And then after you've done it for about a month and it is second nature to do it, then it's a habit. Then you start to expand the time you put into it. Maybe instead of five minutes, you do 10 minutes. That's a good hit workout right there. 10 minutes of hit workout, 15 minutes. So the point is small, consistent is what will bear fruit. 
It is better to put five minutes of working out in every day than a one week, once a week, 30 minute workout. It's better to do it daily. So there's your first hack, small and consistent. Consistency will change your life. Um, in fact, this actually kind of helped my brain. What you experience right now in your life is the result of consistency. Just maybe you're consistently lazy or consistently um, get on social media and lose time there. Or you consistently um, order Starbucks every day and there's a lot of calories there. Whatever you're experiencing now, even if it's a negative thing, it is the result of consistent decision making. Starbucks now and again will not make you overweight. Starbucks every day <laughs> will make you gain weight because there's so much sugar in it, right? And so right now, your life is already the result of your consistencies. So you just need to tweak your consistencies and you can see some change, right? And so that's a really easier way to swallow making change in your life. Secondly, if you're making a new habit that's not particularly enjoyable or just easily forgettable, piggyback it onto something that's already a habit. So like, for example, I started taking these supplements. Well, I need to remember to take these supplements. So I keep them next to my bed. That way when I sit up in the morning and I drink some water, there's my supplements right there. I can just take them right there. Or um, if you're trying to be consistent about listening to podcasts so you don't miss out on a single Java with Jen episode, but you already go, you already have a 30 minute drive to work. Make it a new habit where you piggyback one with the other. Throw in your podcast while you're driving. Okay, you get the point. So piggyback one habit onto the other, and that actually will make things a little bit easier, like doing squats when you're brushing your teeth. Okay, and then the third thing is if you implement some kind of reward, it will program your brain to enjoy this new habit. Your brain will begin to look forward to the reward part of the experience. And so it will begin to, by default, look forward to the habit. And so put some kind of reward, whether it's um, I'm being diligent about getting up all week long. Then maybe when you wake up, go make yourself, get your favorite, some new coffee syrups that you can put in your coffee to make it extra delicious or whip topping to make it extra fancy so you can look forward to it. Or when you get up early, if you're doing it to have your quiet time, go sit in a part of the house that's particularly cozy and like feels good, you know, or um, if you're losing weight, every time you hit a milestone of five pounds, Put some money aside. That way, once you've reached your goal, you've got money to go and buy new clothes. You know, whatever it is. Put, somehow attach a reward to your habit. And honestly, for your brain to feel rewarded, it could be anything that gives you an endorphin. Like, so dark chocolate. Let's say you love dark chocolate. You don't like doing this particular chore. Eat a little dark chocolate while you're doing the chore. Or, um... I had another idea and I lost it. But anyway, so there's there's ways that you can make your habits more enjoyable. Oh, that's what it was. Give yourself a pep talk. Like if I if I worked really hard and worked out and I wasn't in the mood, whatever, giving yourself a really positive dose of encouragement in the mirror, actually your brain still processes it as encouragement. And when it's coming out of your mouth, your brain processes it as truth. And it fills, the Bible says that your belly is filled by the words of your mouth. And so when you say things, your soul, your very gut, your inner, your inner self, your inner guts is filled with the fruit of your words. And so I can look myself in the mirror and say, Jenilee, I am so proud of you. You got up when it was uncomfortable. You worked hard. That felt good. You are one step closer to your goals. Man, I'm so impressed with you. That's amazing. There you go. Another, actually fourth little tweak that you can do is keep in mind, every day you only need 1% improvement in the area that you're wanting to improve. 1%. Because by the end of the year, if you just improve by 1% every day, by the end of the year you are 365% better at whatever that was. Just 1% improvement. So if you're trying to lose weight, and you've got 20 pounds to lose, I mean, that's that's 1% is like two ounces or something. I didn't do the math, but it's really small, right? And so you just need mild improvement every single day, just a little smidge, just a little bit. You know, if you're trying to get better at writing, having a habit of writing, 
1% improvement. That's it. Just just write whatever's 1% better than yesterday. Just do that. And so that makes improvement uh, more manageable. But again, as you can see, it's the small consistent choices that bear fruit. Your life is already the result of your consistency. Just change what you're consistent about and you'll have different results. Okay, there's your life hack. There you go. This is a longer episode. Um, I am going to make a little uh, worksheet that I'm going to put in the description for you guys. First of all, sorry my episode was late today. Holidays, end of story. There it is. You know, you understand. Um, So my episode was a little bit late and I apologize for that. But I'm going to put the little thing in the description. I don't have it made yet. I need to make it. So come back next week maybe when the next episode goes up and see if it's down there. Um, But that will be so you can help process during the new year season that week between the holidays or whatever. is a great time to do it. Share this episode with someone if it was helpful, encouraging to you. Uh, It just gave you some tools. Go share it with somebody. It's super helpful. Throw it on social media. And um, I appreciate it when you guys do that. It really really does bless me. It helps me. It helps the reach of the podcast. Um, I do want to reach people. um, But it, it really primarily happens when you guys are sharing it. So I am always eternally grateful when you leave reviews you share it, you throw it on social media, you have no idea. You're helping my dreams come true when you do that. And I am so grateful. Um, I want to reach people and I know you guys do too. So come on by Instagram, Java with Jen. Come be friends. We can chat over there. It's a lot of fun. Java with Jen merch. You can get you some coffee, a sweatshirt, etc. And otherwise, next week, I'll be coming out with you at you with a shorter episode and it'll be the top three lessons learned this past year. It should be really rich. I'm looking forward to sharing that with you. I'll be able to really kind of share my heart a little bit. And then we're at the new year, you guys. It's It's been a great one. And so I'm so grateful. Thank you for listening. I love y'all and I will see you next week. Thanks so much for tuning in to today's show. Listen, let's stay connected. Come follow me on Instagram at Java with Jen, where you can follow the latest and say, hey, it's a really great way to stay in touch. Many of you have also asked how you can support the show. You can make donations through the Anchor app or on Patreon, or of course, by sharing, rating, and reviewing on social media and iTunes as well. Your heartfelt feedback always reminds me why I do this. Also, don't miss our merch store where you can get super cool Java with Jen swag and coffee. Find it at javawithjenmerch.com. Until next time, remember, hearing God's voice is simple and he wants to be a part of your everyday life. See you next week.